The NASCAR Camping World Truck Series on Speed is brought to you by Camping World RV Sales. The best selection and best value on travel trailers, guaranteed. By KFC, today is a KFC day and today tastes so good. And by Touch of Gray, gets rid of some gray, never all. Welcome back under the lights at Kentucky Speedway. Let's hear from the guy who finished third, Brendan Gaughan. A pretty good effort in qualifying, but an outstanding effort. What did you guys do right tonight to make this top five happen? Uh, it wasn't anything I did. Brian Berry and the boys worked hard. I pounded the right side off our Tundra, and Brian did a bunch of adjustments in the end. We did two tires and then restarts. I've always said I learned from Ron and Jack years ago how to restart, do a little different things on my transmissions, and restarts got me here. I mean, I passed, what, seven, eight, nine cars and two restarts, so love that transmission. Love the Jermaine boys. All right, Brendan gone with another great run. He comes home in third place. And a great finish for Brennan Gone. Let's take a look at our Touch of Gray winning moment. The winning touch by Touch of Gray. And Kyle Busch started the day off after he missed the driver's meeting. He had to go to the back of the field to start. Yeah, in between that start of the race and the end of the race, he passed an awful lot of trucks. There he is <laughs> going by two trucks right here at the same time. Yeah, and he wound up right at the front of the field. Squeezed down on Jason White a little bit, maybe threw Jason off his game just enough for Kyle to get the break that he needed. Elliott, Sadler, Parker, Krigelman, three wide with Jason White, but at the checker, the result was something we've come accustomed to in 2011. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or in his brief career, 29 times he's been to victory lane. That was the touch of gray winning touch. The hat dance continues in victory lane for Kyle Busch. We'll be back in just a moment here at Kentucky Speedway. Welcome back under the lights and under the moonlights here at Sparta, Kentucky at Kentucky Speedway. Let's hear from the guy who came oh so close to getting his first win. Driver of the 22, Joey Coulter's with Herman. Thank you, Rick and uh, Joey Coulter. You know, a couple months ago, you might have been ecstatic with a seventh place finish, but Still a good run, but you guys, if that caution had came out, Kyle Busch said in victory lane, you guys were going to be the truck to beat. Uh, man, I was so bummed when that caution came out. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't too worried about it. You know, I, I knew we had a good truck. Um, you know, I just, I don't know, kind of missed it on the restart. And uh, then the second restart, whatever I hurt the first one, uh, messed up in the second one. So, uh, you know, it just had a good third gear and uh, thought I was going to be able to stick with him and it just missed fourth gear. It just, I pulled it back and it, it didn't go all the way in, but it was a great night for number 22. I mean, awesome pit stops. Harold played great pit strategy and, uh, you know, we'll, we're ready to go to Iowa. I can't wait. It's one of my favorite racetracks, so uh, we're, we're looking forward to it. These guys are gaining momentum every week. Ray? I didn't even notice you were here in qualifying, but all of a sudden I had to notice you were here at the end. What was the difference? Uh, worked hard, you know, Georgia boots on the truck and they're the, they're the hardest working boot in America and we couldn't let them down. So we went out there and worked hard. Juniors made some great calls. I mean, we, we made huge, huge changes, uh, in the setup, uh, air pressures and wedges and Weber's and shocks. And I mean, we did a ton of stuff during the race and at the end is when it was the best. Uh, we got a little, we were a little better toward the middle, but then we changed, got a little tight, but, uh. We never give up. You know, it's Jermaine racing. You know, we never give up, and uh, we still haven't given up. You know, we're not we're not going to Iowa. Um, no sponsor to go with. So, anybody watching wants to sponsor a truck, we need a sponsor by Tuesday. All right, these guys never give up, and that brought them home another top five. Makes Ray a very unbelievable situation and scenario there for our defending series champion Todd Bodine. It doesn't look like you're going to make the trip next week to Iowa. Yeah, it's too bad here, but what a what a great effort again by Kyle Busch and Parker Kligerman, second consecutive top two finish. And how about the Jermaine guys, Brendan Gaughan, top about nine with top fives? Yeah, look at Jason White, a great night for him, having a chance to sniff that victory at the end. I know that meant a lot to Jason. 12 trucks on the lead lap when the checkered flag flew. It was a crazy night. We saw some amazing things on the racetrack. Again, coming in, your top six in points all had issues, either involved in accidents or had mechanical failures. Here you got Johnny Sauter finishing 24th, Cole Witt finishing 26th, Hornaday finishing 27th. Amazing. Yeah, that's lottery kind of stuff. You can't say that the top six are going to have all, all going to have problems in the same race. How's that happen? Even though it was crazy at the beginning of the race and in the middle of the race, 
something normal happen once again. We saw Kyle Busch win another Camping World truck race. It's his 29th career truck win. Next week, the Camping World Truck Series heads to the heartland of America as it visits the Iowa Speedway. Last year, it was all about rookie Austin Dillon as he took the pole and went on to take home his first checker. With this year's strong rookie class, will we see another young gun get their first Camping World Truck Series win? Tune in to find out. Chris Devota hosts the setup starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, followed by flag-to-flag -flag coverage only on speed.